back everyone to a brand new getting color right here on the big vetobrand.com i am virtue and that is big Vito lagrasso man what's up what's going how on, is man? everybody doing i hope everybody's having a great day um busy weekend busy day sitting here for getting color with my associate and good friend, Mr. Virtue. Mr. Virtue, how is the weather in Cleveland today? It warmed up finally. It, it was rainy today, but it's like a muggy. So it finally warmed up this weekend. Right. As you can see, everybody, coming from Daytona Beach, the jacuzzi. If you're following on Facebook, I know you're all jelly, but life is such. Anyway, but I will tell you, yesterday I had a great time at the Ocean Center. I saw a lot of my old mentors. I saw a lot of good friends. Um, I got booked on a trip to Cuba. Pretty cool. Uh, I got some more bookings coming in. Wrestling is picking up. If you'd like to book Big Vito, check me out at bigvito.com. Or if you'd like to email me, it's bigvito at bigvito.com. Guys, to take all bookings, seminars, everything you got, I'll take. You know, we got things to pay for here. Noel's medical bills are going up, up, up. And, you know, it's uh, it's something. Right now, she's a little bit under the weather. She says hello to everybody. We will be back doing our, you know, Mr. versus Mrs. As soon as she's able to. She's just not able to, guys. So, Virtue, we have missed. We have some stuff coming up. We have some good things to talk about. You've got a lot of good subjects. Hit me up. What we got? First of all, you've wrestled in Puerto Rico. Have you wrestled in Cuba before? Never. Is it so? Are you going to Cuba for wrestling? Yes. Is it safe in Cuba these days? I hope so. Okay, just making sure. You know, I know this isn't the 1950s. No, yeah, but you know what? I I've been <laughs> all over the world, and everywhere they say it's not safe. I mean, there's always this, but like when you're going in with a group of Americans in a pro atmosphere, as long as you behave and you know how to act and your your culture status and you you're respectful and you don't act a fool. It's different times, you know what I mean? So it should be all right. So here's what we're going to do for the wrestling topics tonight. I want to, because we would like to get back on the no DQ review at some point, but this, the, we, we go live Thursday nights at eight and your schedule, it just doesn't work out. When can you, can you guys change that at all? I mean, is that something that could be changed? Is something that it's, could be so usually there? when I, usually when we change it, it's because I can't do it Thursday and we do Saturday night at eight. That wouldn't be a problem, you know what I mean? If we could yeah. try and get on. With so what I'm going to do is I want to give you the format, the topics of the review from this past week because a couple right. of people in the No DQ chat wanted Big Vito's opinion on some of these. All right. First, got to say hello to Annette, our, our my fine friend. Annette, how's everything in Australia? Hope everything is doing good. Love your hair. Everything is looking good. Annette is doing her thing. All right, Virtue, go ahead. So the first topic, Vito. Remember, people in the NoDQ chat wanted to know what Vito's thoughts were on some of these topics. So I'm like, Go we're going to do them on the on getting color next week. So topic number one, okay. Tony Khan's big announcement, Vito. And, and look, that trick is not working anymore because yeah. the ratings are flatlined, right? So the big announcement weeks aren't popping back over a million. Nope. He needs a new strategy. But let's focus on the announcement itself. Okay. AEW and New Japan having a joint event called the Forbidden Door in Chicago. We've talked about this before. New Japan has never gotten over here in the United States. Nope. To their fan base, they do. They've always had to intertwine a little bit with other promotions. Most recently, Ring of Honor. Well, who owns Ring of Honor now? Tony Khan. Right. And here they are piggybacking off of AEW to be booked in the United States. What's your thoughts on Tony Khan's forbidden door with New Japan? And guys, are those guys going to want a job to AE to get W guys over here? Some of their top guys in New Japan. I don't know how that works. Guys, when you're running a company and you're not, you don't have any wrestling experience, you're doing it as, I, I mean, he's a fan. And because you hang with the boys doesn't mean you are one of the boys and doesn't mean you have the knowledge and experience of the boys, right? Coming up and saying the same things and coming up and being very vocal and forthright, you know, 
Vince McMahon did it as an announcer and he knew his product. If he was an announcer, instead of being a forefront person, it'd be a different story. But him trying, it's a different era. And, and for him to be, get the, the, the yays and the nays. Um, well, that's probably just, me. If you get you the, know, Vito, time out, bro. If everybody yeah. wants to know why I just made your phone go off, because as we started our show this evening, I was texting Leslie, or, or so I thought, hey, thanks, babe. And it went to you. I text you that message. I know. Instead. I didn't so say I, nothing. I, so I, I, I needed to make sure I let you know that was for yeah. her. And why not share it with the bigvitobrand.com? So there you all go. Right, all right. So but, versus, but versus, versus the forbidden not, door. Oh. That Yeah, not that forbidden door, but we're talking Tony Khan's forbidden, forbidden door. Tony Khan's forbidden door. All right. So like I was saying. If he was more on the announcer role and didn't come out every week, I think he'd have more of an effect. But because he wants to be in the forefront, he wants to be the yay guy, he wants to be, it's his company, he wants to be out there, he wants to be popular and famous, it's not coming off very good. And for the guys who are there um, working, I mean, he, they should have Sting making interviews. They should have Christian Cage making interviews. They should have... CM Punk making interviews. They should have Chris Jericho making interviews. They should have the guys making announcements who they want to see. I just think like if I had that roster, okay, and I thought about this this week, and you'll like this. Mm -hmm. I would take every WWE guy they had. I'm talking main roster guy. And I would put a program up of the main roster guys they could make a great show. I don't know why they don't do it. That's who the people want to see. So if you had Christian Cage against CM Punk, you had Daniel Bryan against the big show, you have there's so many different avenues you could do, but they don't do it, right? So everything is kind of like it's a wave, right? A wave of guys mm -hmm. they're trying to build. But if you're not putting them together, you have the stars you're just not using them. When I made the assessment that you're getting the leftover parts from the WWE, you're taking all these AEW guys who never made the main roster, so they're not really stars. They're guys who got let go from developmental. And if you get let go from developmental, are you really a superstar? Are you truly? You're not. Keith Lee, everybody had the hype. Keith Lee, Keith Lee, Keith Lee, Keith Lee. What is Keith Lee doing for us? Nothing. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Nothing. I think they forgot they nothing. signed him already. Absolutely, positively nothing, right? They just signed this um, Anthony Green kid. What is he doing for us? You know, comes on. Okay, what are you doing? You didn't make it off the main roster. You have so many other guys who were there that did not make the main roster. You have all these leftovers. You want to put them as enhancement talent and put them against the stars? That makes sense because they have a little bit more experience than some of the other guys. Or build the other show around the NXT guys. Or do an NXT invasion on the main show. But they be creative. You know what I mean? And they're not doing that. And it's well, terrible. They bring the, you know, the guys over from WWE and they give them that debut. And then most of them they forget about. You know, I mean, even Punk and Daniel Bryan have went a few weeks each not being on TV. Where is Miro? He's probably question. one of my favorite guys on the roster. On the ro my favorite guy on the roster. He's big. Good question, man. He's athletic. He's somebody I would love to wrestle because he's got that body. He's got that look. He's tough. That's somebody who you want on TV. See, I think I, this is my opinion, my speculation. I think what Tony Khan does is he looks at these wrestlers and he, he goes by Meltzer's match rating. And Miro's not going to be getting four and five star matches. And that's how he determines who gets on Dynamite and Rampage. I just have that gut feeling. But this company is losing money hand over fist. You don't mm -hmm. think you don't think who's ever funding this is going to pull the plug on this company? Let, look, Shad Khan. He owns the Jacksonville Jaguars just to own a football team. Right. He made his billions in the auto industry. Right. He's closed plants when we went through a you know a recession and laid people off from the business that made him billions. 
you're telling me if he doesn't see red flags around the wrestling vanity project from his son, he's not going to step in at some point. The guy is a mogul businessman. What do they do when things fail or don't make money? They, they don't succeed at the rate maybe they thought they would. They cut it. But right? remember, Jeff Jarrett just came up and he said that um, TNA made $24 million a year. But if you spent $36 million, oh, then yeah. you lose $12 million. That you can't do that forever. Right. I mean, you some businesses might say for the first four years, we're going to lose $20 million a year. But then by year five, we're going to make $40 million a year. Yeah, but that's yeah, how yeah. business works. If you don't start making that money. First bye -bye. two years, first two years of the business is a wash. It's an mm -hmm. investment. On your third year, if you don't turn a profit in the out of that fiscal year, it's time to think of something else. He's got all these guys. He's got a roster of guys. He's starting to let them go. Wait a minute. Annette is leaving. Annette is stepping into work. I'll catch up with the rest of your show later. She knows Take where to care. find it. I know. Yeah. She'll get on it. Annette, peace. Be good. All right. So here it is. Will they fold? Now, for the little bit of rumblings that I've heard, something might be in the works. Something might happen. But for the avenues that they're going, now they just opened up Ring of Honor, right? Ring of Honor, they have Ring of Honor guys. Okay. They're bringing this big giant guy that nobody knows. He's working, right? Now, how long before they expose him, they show he can't wrestle? Who knows? WWE did that with Omos pretty quickly. Didn't I say that? And they exposed him, and then they beat him again. He's one of the casualties to be let go after WrestleMania. Thank you. We have nothing for you. Poor MVP. They put him with him trying to save that, but ugh. Nope. Hopefully MVP gets back to where he can just work his own matches and do his own thing and get in a feud. I think that they get tired of running the same thing and you could see the handwriting on the wall or what's what. So we could see another roster cuts coming. Now, we're going to transition over to WWE. Go ahead. Um, so thoughts on he's no longer Austin Theory. He's just Theory. <laughs> and he just beat Finn Balor for the United States Championship. He's got. He's been on TV in a program like with Vince McMahon, like he's Vince right. McMahon's up and comer, right? Not anybody gets that spot, right. but also a lot of people fail at that spot too in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took Drew McIntyre to have to come back to WWE, and he was actually put in NXT for a bit. His injury actually worked to his favor. I think he was the NXT champion, got right. hurt, left NXT to re rehab, and came back on the main roster, finally made the main event. What's your thoughts on theory? A lot of people say, he, you know, Vince McMahon looks at him as like a young John Cena. Whoa, whoa. But, you know, this is rumors and scuttlebutt. Um, what do you think on theory? Because they got a mid-card title on him now. Now, the name changes, I think, is kind of ridiculous because you can't change somebody's name. You're changing everybody's name because you don't want nobody to own their own name, which is ridiculous. It's you're producing red tape and confusion, mm -hmm. right? They changed a bunch of people. The name changes are stupid. They're going to be known as those. Everybody's going to know their first name. They're going to know their last name. It doesn't matter, yeah. right? If if Remember they did that with Riddle? Now it's right. Matt Riddle. Now it's Riddle. Riddle. But you guys got to remember something, right? When you look at just making money, greed is contagious. And when you have greed and you want to own everything, but you don't let greed breathe. And if you let things breathe, it'll bring in finances. They just gave back third party, um, third party yeah. uh, for the for the guys, right? Did they give the full thing back? From what I understand, they gave, they gave them the right to go do third party bookings because it's they're independent contractors, they're not employees. So why can't they do it? Right? If they're gonna be full-time employees. Then it's a whole different story. You got to pay taxes for them. You have to pay medical for them. You have to pay social security for them. It's expensive to have these employees. That's why they have, you know, subcontractors yeah, or, yeah. or private contractors, which everybody knows, 
right? It's just like today's world. They will hire 50 part-timers to do the job of two full-timers. Yeah. True. So now, the name change things, no good. I was impressed with Theory at WrestleMania. I mean, I thought he should have went over against uh, Pat McAfee because Pat McAfee's just an announcer. He's not going to wrestle every week. The crowd loved him anyway, so McAfee winning or losing wasn't going to change his fans' opinion of him. But Theory, you know, granted, it's – Everything about, like this, um, Al Snow says, Vito, everything about a wrestling match is real except the finish. But I don't know. I think Theory has potential. I mean, at some point, WWE needs to strap the rock Ele- to somebody. Elevate it. Yeah, I have to elevate someone. Now, with this kid, right, he was in He was in the uh, – he was in WrestleMania. He was in there with Brock Lesnar. He took a bump, right? Oh, that was the Hell in a Cell. Hell or, in a Cell. Uh, Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber, right. Yep. So then – they brought him along. They brought him back on TV. They've been working him with Vince McMahon. You can only do it slowly. You can't put somebody up there and say, okay, because it's going to be a fail. So if he takes, you know, um, somebody in the chat says it reminds me of a cruiserweight. Yeah, he's smaller, but there are. this isn't a big guy industry, you know? So, I mean. There's not many big guys left in not, WWE. Not, there's not many big guys left. When you look at big guys, who's a big guy? Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton is considered a big guy. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Lashley. And even some of those guys that are big aren't big like big guys used to be. Yeah, they're not. No. So, I mean, the industry has changed. Now, all the people they have in NXT, I looked at some of them. They're all six-footers. Nobody's over 6'5", six, 6'4". Six, Nobody's yeah. over that. They're athletic. You know, but they're learning wrestling. What happens if they learn wrestling? You know, can they learn a business? It's a 50-50 crapshoot. So you don't know. But you got to give WWE credit for trying to develop their own kind of brand. That's why they originally made the developmental center. That's why they made Florida Championship Wrestling. That's what they wanted to do instead of using the rethreads of the wrestling business to promote their own thing. But they also want to have their own kind of guys. Yep. Now... Also, this was interesting. This happened on Raw, not this past Monday, but um, okay. actually, no, last Monday. Tonight, Raw, the next Raw is tonight. Rhea Ripley, who, remember, she was the champion, and then yeah. Bianca Belair was the other champion. Both of them kind of lost their titles, you know, rather quickly and kind of faded back into obscurity. Of course, Bianca Belair got back beat Becky. She's the champion now. Is Rhea Ripley now maybe going to get pushed again? Um, She was with Liv Morgan, turned on her, so it seems like she's a heel. Could she be a candidate with that dark goth look to maybe be a female in the Edge faction? Should she just be be. on her own like a punk rocker? Um, I would put her in the Edge faction. Like, What do you think? What what I'm saying is Bianca Belair, they're pushing her again. So new female stars, is Rhea Ripley able to recover from her past year? I think that her best bet would be to join the new brood and be with Edge and give her credibility, which she Mm -hmm. doesn't have, right? If she's got the rub from Edge that makes her the biggest star, puts her in the main main roster. Now, one thing I That's a good visual too, Edge, Damian Priest with his eyeliner and, and Rhea Ripley, and that'd be a good gothic dark visual yes so what i was just going to say is um becky lynch upset with her booking and programming is she in the doghouse did she do something wrong is she on is she on not good terms you can be on top for so long but you could see she was disgruntled going out there and change of face change of attitude so could they be pulling her back a little bit to bring her back to reality? Like we gave you too much quits and glamour and now we're pulling you back a little bit. What I think, think she might have an announcement on raw tonight or something. So I'm sure we'll have something to talk about next week based on what happens with Becky Lynch tonight. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Now Vito, anything yeah. on before we get to our main topic, anything on your mind you want to bring up? No, and with younger guys at indie shows, I know we've you've talked about that before. I wish the guys at indie shows. (laughs) I worked this young man, 
And um, he tried, okay? He was nervous. He tried. But when you don't know how to work, it's a work. And if you don't know how to make the fans interested and believe, and you're too worried about being on the other side of the ring instead of cutting the green and being close to your opponent, it's kind of hard to have a match. And when you're doing all these stupid things to a veteran, try to rub his face in the mat, big no-no. That's like an ass kicking. Um, trying to outpunch probably one of the toughest mofos that, <laughs> and dogs that have been in the business. And I'm like, you know, settled and relaxed and you're trying to hit me. I'm like, come on, man. You know, it's just not the same. And then you dead ass on the finish and everything you're doing because you blew up at 20 years mm -hmm. old. If you're blowing up with me, I mean, my gas tank is full. Everybody knows Vito, you know, you're going in there. He's going to make it. Yeah. But against me at this point and you blowing up, I had to look at him and said, bro, how the hell did you blow up? Do you really... Can I have your birth certificate because you don't know what you're doing? Would you give it to me? Because I look the part, you know? And you can only be nice because if it was the old days, we got your ass handed to you, something fierce. But there's a lesson to be learned. Try to teach and pass it on. The days of beating people up, you know, are long gone because people don't appreciate it. People who were watching, who were mentors to me, they knew and they were waiting. I hit them with two honey clotheslines. They heard it three blocks down. They knew Vito was in the house. But it's as far as we took it. And then when the finish was dead, I said, okay, that's it, guys. And I just, I hooked them, booked them, and then that was it. I had nothing else to say. I just, I went out there. The dress was beautiful. Buff Bagwell was in the house. Nice. And Buff saw that I had this stuff. This is true. And I said, Buff, I'm taking over the American males. I said, you're going to be the manager. I'm going to be part of the new American Males team. American Males, American Males. That's hot. That's nice. hot. I had to ask every week, you know, what's on your mind. All right, big time. That was here. good stuff. Good stuff. Go ahead. Last time. How is allegedly, you were speaking disgruntled, Becky. Right. Allegedly, Alexa Bliss is the same way. Um, you know, why don't you have anything for me? And creative doesn't. Remember, she got wrapped up in the whole Bray Wyatt thing. Um, Which she, she had a lot wonderful. of TV. She got a lot of TV time out of that. Yes. And sold merchandise and didn't have to worry. You know, because remember, she's yes. a small girl. And she was booked as the champion quite a bit coming up from NXT with the likes of Sasha, Becky, Bailey, Charlotte. She did awesome. Alexa kind of came in and had a lot of reigns. But she also got injured a lot. So this whole thing with... The dark gimmick kind of saved her. Right. And now they don't have anything for her. And I'm actually going to pick her side. Like, I know you're supposed to do what you're told and bite your tongue. Um, she's proven that she can be an asset, right? She can. Uh, she, her YouTube videos, she's good looking, get good hits. She sells merch. I don't see how they can't figure out something to do with her. I don't know, Vito. Have Every her come back like she used to be. Right. And when matches is an underdog baby face, like the female version of a Daniel Bryan. What do you think here? How is Alexa Bliss not on TV and she's healthy? And now guys, she did just get married. Right. But guys, I'm going to say this. When you have your run on TV and this is the God's honest truth and your champion, you hold on to it as long as you can because you're never going to get that, that rise again. And it might not come your way. If you're lucky, you'll get it again. But when you have it, you ride it to the end, okay? And that's the truth. That goes without saying. So I could understand her frustration. You know, she rode, she was champion. She had, I thought that was a great gimmick for her. I thought some, why can't they make a female Wyatt's? That would be ID, that would be box office. Yep. The female Wyatt's with the Druids. And here she comes. It's mean little nasty thing. And all of a sudden we have these devil's creatures coming out, kicking the hell out of somebody. And then here she comes for the pin and lays down. Paige is supposed to be coming back, supposedly, right? So you got Paige, you got Bliss, you got Sasha Banks, you know. 
Becky Lynch is like kind of pushed to the side. You still have Ronda Rousey. You got Charlotte Flair, right? And then, and then Bianca, Bianca Belair. Belair. Yep. And then right? Rhea Ripley, maybe. We'll see. But then they... you also have um, Natalie, right? Natalia is down in NXT. Then you have um, uh, Tamia. Uh, uh, Tamia. Yeah, Snuka. Tamia, Tamia in... and uh, who was the other girl that was in those wedding angles? Remember for the twenty four seven title? Uh, I can't remember her name. The blonde, but you know who I'm talking. About. Right now, you have you have those girls that are in there. You know what I mean? So they have the school girls that they that they're supposed to supposedly could do something with. They just don't. I, I just don't think. With so many people on the roster and so little time on TV, they can't fit everybody in. You know, and it's like they just say you got to buddy up with a writer. They got to put stuff in for you. They got to do stuff. So I mean, that's the name of the game. You got to schmooze and get your time, and when you get it, you ride it to the end. Yeah, I mean, she's clearly has a good track record uh, of being booked strong in WWE. Yeah, and former champion. She, you know, she's cute, looks good. Like, put this girl on TV. And I get it, right? They, well, you know, that's not an excuse. There's three hours Monday night and there's two hours Friday night. That's five hours of main roster TV a week. Right. There's no excuse to leave anybody off that has that's somewhat of a draw. And you know what I mean? I, I don't know. That's They're weird, Vito. But weird. I got to tell you something, right? For all the people that have sitting on the side, right, that are experienced, they should be down working NXT – and working with these young people because that's where they're going to get their experience, working with the pros, working with world champions. So if you have Natalie working down there, former world champion, you have Alexa okay. Bliss, former world champion, you have Sasha Banks, former world champion, right? You have uh, Tamina, former tag team champion. Why can't these girls go down and be the main cogs of the developmental and develop the new girls? Yeah, why not? Thanks. I, I mean, mean you Ziggler, asked Ziggler, me. Ziggler was down there winning the title. Yeah. Doing it. You know, but um, hey, I mean, she just got so much mainstream press from her from her wedding. Yep. Why she not married capitalize? a music guy. Ryan yeah. Cabrera was like in the music industry. But here's the flip side of that, right? The reason they're probably not because they got burned with Snoop Dogg and Sasha Banks, their cousins. Snoop Dogg came in, then he went over to AEW, and they had to pull all the merch. True. So I keep up on wrestling. No, I just don't brag about it. But we'll see. I mean, we'll we see always – Yeah, and uh, we'll see what happens with Becky Lynch tonight, so I'm sure we'll talk about that next time. Anything you'd like to say in closing? Nothing. Just thank you guys for all the well wishes. Thank you for watching TikTok, Instagram. TikTok, we have over 10,000 subscribers you know, Instagram is booming. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. Come join us. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. If you'd like to book me for independent shows, seminars, autograph signings, guys, you know, um, hey, Big Vito at BigVito.com or go to the Big Vito brand. Hit up Noel. She'll take the booking. Anything can happen. Great things. The dress is back. And I love wrestling. Oh, Dana Brooke was the name I forgot. Can't we got to give Dana Brooke a shout out there? Yo, hold on, my, my love, Dana Brooke. I love that girl. Yeah. If they would only give her a fucking run, give her a fucking chance, please. They did it to uh, um, to Neil Dashwood. They gave her a run, right? They started to give her, and then she beat up Osaka, and then she got fired. I don't think that's going to be. Oh, I'm that's speaking be. of returning, Oscar and Bailey are on the doorstep of coming back too. Oh, I can imagine creative really. Oh, I don't. What do we do? Too many people here. They got to be going have, nuts. Have her speak English. Okay, I said it. Pair All up right. with Alexa Bliss, and Alexa can speak for Oscar. And there's a tag team, I think, to face uh, Sasha and uh, Naomi. There you go. Tag there champs. You go. All right. All right. Follow Vito on Twitter at the Big Vito Brand. Follow me if you'd like at no DQ underscore virtue. Check out the Patreon over on patreon.com slash big V Mafia. For Big Vito, I am Virtue. This has been getting color right here on the Big Vito Brand.com. We will see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out, guys.